Hi, and welcome to part two of the search mini series. In this part, we're going to look at the search filters. Out of the box, SSA comes with a set of search filters like date range, drop down, manage range, range slider, all these different ones. And each one has its own JavaScript file to handle or to manage how it filters, but they all work in the same concept. So what we're going to do now is have a look at one of them, which is the date range, and see how it works to understand how all of them would work. And again, it's all based on backbone. So as you can see, as soon as I filter here, have a look at the query string here. So currently, it's search and nothing else. As I start filtering, what it does is it adds my facet name and my filter data. And this is how search works. It's all about the hash keys. So this hash parameter here is what actually filters. The filter component itself doesn't know what's being filtered. So it does not know anything about the search results here. All it cares about is making sure that its content is correct as a component, as well as its hash here is correct. Now let's understand how this works. So if I go to my facet date range, again, it's completely based on backbone. So we have our model and view. So what we have here is our render for our view, and we have a set of events that are being invoked. So on change of the start date, we'll invoke the update facet. On change of the end date, we'll invoke the same function. On click of the bottom remove filter or the clear filter, we'll invoke the clear filter method. Let's see what update facet does. So update facet, all it does is actually gets the data from from date and to date, and then gets the signature of the model and then invokes something called query model .update hash. This is in the component search query. And what this does is it takes in the new hash and the target URL, it starts parsing the hash parameters as an object and then loops on the new hash with the hash object of key and puts the item. So you can see here what it's doing is ultimately sit setting the hash object. And if it's not found, it just removes it. And of course, it updates the target URL. So it's really, really quite simple. All it focuses on is actually just updating that hash. Now, there are other things that the render method does. So as soon as I do the update facet, if we go back to our init, of course, on model on change. So as soon as this changes, the this.render will get invoked. And if the hash changed, update component.bind is invoked. This is really important. What this does is, so if any other component updates the hash, the component should re re rebound or get rebinded because some of the components are data specific. For example, the dropdown. The values in the dropdown are specific to what's currently coming from the result. So it's important that we rebind this component so that the filter or the values are only the values that should be displayed. Now, what the render function does is, other than validation, is it just sets the actual values for here. So it just puts these values here. That's all it does. Now, let's see that in action. So I'll start off with just putting a breakpoint on the update facet. And I'll change my filter here. As you can see, I went into this function. And it's going through the from date to date signature. And then it's going to go to the update hash, which is the function we've seen. If I go to the facet data here, Sorry, I want to go to the search service and go to the get data afterwards. As you can see, now I'm in the get data function. So I'm actually going now to the server. And the first step here is parse, ha parse hash parameters. I'm just going to put a breakpoint here again just to show you. So the hash here has my date facet. It has an object which has the date facet with the specific date. And this is going to be passed 
back to my server so that all the components get filtered or the search result component get filtered as we discussed last time when my actual server method gets invoked from sycore.xa.feature.search. Thank you for watching. In the next video, we're going to have a look at how to create a new, completely new search filter.